Welcome to the Catholic community of St. Francis Xavier in Hunt Valley, Maryland. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This liturgy is offered for you, the parishioners of the Catholic community of St. Francis Xavier. Thank you for joining us for Mass. For those watching from home, a worship made for this Mass can be found under the Mass Info tab on our website or in the Facebook comments section during this live stream. Due to COVID restrictions, we cannot take up a collection of today's Mass, yet for your financial support is vital to maintaining our parish facilities and ministries. Please use the baskets located at the exit doors for access our online giving options. Thank you for your support. The poor box for the month of August is for Mother Seton Academy. Please register on our website by 4 p.m. on Saturday or by calling the parish office Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. in North Mass. It is important that we have a record of who has been inside our building in the event, in the event someone gets sick. Thank you for your cooperation. The Feast of the Assumption, Saturday, August 15th, is not a holy day of obligation this year. However, Mass will be celebrated at 10 a.m our worship space. Young adults, if you are a college student or graduate or trying to make sense of our world right now, meet with other young adults on Sunday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. in Mary's Garden for conversation and easy faith sharing. Our summer camp, Power Up, live on our website throughout the month of August. Camp boxes are available this weekend after Mass. Be sure to check out the awesome videos produced by our CCSFX teens. Come join our Wednesday CCSFX Lunch Bunch, an opportunity for those who live alone or feel isolated during this time to come together and share fellowship, conversation, and prayer. Beginning this Wednesday, August 12th at 1245 p.m., bring a chair, your lunch, and find a shady spot. Cold bottled water will be provided. Please sit six feet apart and wear a mask when not eating. Our women's group plan now to attend an information session on Tuesday evening August 25th at 7 p.m. to learn about their fall studies, Unlocking the Mysteries of the Bible on Tuesdays, and Behold His Glory, a study of the Old Testament on Mondays. Again, that's August 25th at 7 p.m. And now, grateful that we can continue to be together, let us prepare to worship. We will begin with the song, The Canticle of the Sun. The words are available on Facebook in the comments section. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the sun, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays. The moon and the stars will light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let us celebrate together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us turn to our good God, with acknowledging our sinfulness and seeking reconciliation with God and our neighbor. Lord Jesus, you appeared to your disciples on the stormy sea. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you commanded Peter to walk on the water. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to have the courage to come to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, we glorify, glorify you, 
we give, give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at, at the right, right hand, hand of the Father. Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the, adopt the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen attentively to the word of God. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and rushing rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. Then he heard this. Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice looked on from heaven. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in hearing me, wit me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came forward toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. <coughs> Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The stories of Elijah standing on the mountain and St. Peter's walking on the sea are for many of us two of the most riveting stories in the Bible. In both, men face God and face their fears, and in so doing, discover new strength. How so? 
First, there's Elijah, the greatest of the Hebrew prophets, hiding out in a cave. Why is he there? What's going on? Here's what happened. Just a few days earlier, Elijah stood on the top of Mount Carmel with the prophets of the pagan god Baal. As they both called on their deities to consume a fire, a sacrifice on an altar with fire. And there on the top of Mount Carmel, kissed by the Mediterranean vista, the prophets of Baal prayed, danced, sang, even cut themselves with knives, begging the silent gods to accept their offering, all to, all to no avail. And Elijah winds up tormenting them, taunting them, telling them that their deities are mute and impotent and worthless. Then at the end of the day, as the pagan prophets limp away from their, their performance, Elijah prays, asking the Lord God to accept his offering. And so with thunder, a thunderous terror, fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering on the altar. Swift summary judgments followed. Elijah orders the people to seize the prophets of Baal and slaughter them to the last man. You would think that would be the end of the story, but it's not. Beautifully, King Ahab reports back to Queen Jezebel, a devotee of Baal, and all that Elijah had done. And hearing that her fawning priests are dead, the queen puts a contract out on the prophet, vowing to take his life. And what did Elijah do? He did what you and I would do. He ran for his life. But this was not just a run, any run. Elijah ran from Mount Carmel on the northwestern Mediterranean coast, some 90 miles south of Beersheba, an isolated oasis in the desert of Judah. There he licks his ego's wounds, sits down under a broom tree, and has a pity party. He stays there for some time until an angel brings him food and water. He sleeps. He rises a second day, eats some more, and travels to this cave where we find him in our gospel reading today, hiding out in fear, believing he's the last of God's true believers left on the planet. Elijah speaks. He tells God how faithful he has been and how awful God's people are. God listens until, at last, God summons him to walk out of that cave and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. Then the Lord passes by in awesome majesty. The mountains part, the rocks shatter, the wind howls. But Elijah does not meet the Lord in hewn mountains, crumbled rocks, or bleeding wind. Then comes an earthquake followed by fire. But again, God is not in the quaking of the earth or the crackling of the fire. At last there comes a gentle whisper. Finally, at last, Elijah senses God's presence, covers his face with his cloak, and stands before the Lord Almighty who gives to the prophet a new assignment with it and a new destiny. Now let's jump 700 years of history to the story from the Gospel reading. We all know it from childhood, seeing Jesus walking on the water. Simon Peter steps out of the boat and walks on the stormy sea until he takes his eyes off Jesus and begins to sink. Going down like a rock, Jesus reaches out his hand to Peter and together they step back into the boat. Immediately the angry winds subside and the, the disciples worship our Lord. Or is it? I'm not sure. When I was taught this story in my younger years, I remember a twist that's not in our reading. I was told, weren't you? That Peter looked down at the waves and sank because he took his eyes off of Jesus. 
makes for great storytelling. But here's what the text says, if we listen carefully. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. The big fisherman began to seek, sink, not when he looked down at the waves, but when he looked past our Lord and saw the wind. Here's another story, and maybe on its other side, another way of doing life. Don't misunderstand me. I know the fear that haunts St. Peter quite well. It lives in all of us. In fact, that same fear stalked the prophet Elijah. Elijah, the greatest of the Hebrew prophets, the man who stared down King Ahab and spoke summary judgment upon the queen Jezebel. Cowers in a cave, shivers in the cold, lost in self-imposed exile that has him ground down to find powder. What happened? Like Peter, the prophet looked past the Lord, seeing only the fierce wind of Jezebel's threats, shattered rocks and dancing fire. What is God saying to us who find ourselves somewhat, somewhere in these riveting stories? For one thing, life today has all manner of death-dealing threats, just as it did for Elijah, coward in the cave, and Peter, who sank in the sea. You know, the Bible never minimizes or soft-pedals the realities of spiritual evil, physical danger, or natural disasters. One day we will all have an appointment with tragedy, a synonymy of pain, and yes, death which will not, be, we will not be able to cancel or to reschedule. People are going to hurt us. Disease will infect us. Disappointment will wound us. Death will visit us. Jezebel has many sons and daughters. The stormy sea still rages without warning. We find the good news both in our stories and in life in the presence of the one who loves us who never abandons us, even to our worst fears. And as God came to Elijah on the mountain, so our Lord walked on an angry sea to lift Peter from certain death. So God in Christ comes to us in whispered love, an outstretched hand. There are times when in absolute trust, we keep our eyes on the Lord and stare down evil. We walk on water and amaze ourselves and others. Other times we find ourselves pummeled by our fears, sinking in our doubts. But at every term, in all times, God is there. God speaks our name. He whispers assurance and summons us to new and renewing work. And yes, at the end, God called both Elijah and Peter to an even even more important work than before. Elijah found the younger Elisha, who became his pupil and towering successor. And Peter? Well, Peter became the number one disciple in spite of all his faults and failings. Even Peter's cowardice and denial could not keep the risen Lord from finding him and recalling him to greater work. My friends in Christ, the winds will and do howl, the earth shakes, but what good news, there's a whisper beyond the wind, inviting us to live more fully in the very presence of our good God, amen.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. Just God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. <coughs> Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and, and became, became man. man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death, death and was buried, buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life, life of the, the world, world to come. come. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus tells his disciples, do not be afraid. With a perfect trust which banishes all fear, let us now bring our needs before the Lord. For the church, seeking to be a worldwide community, ever open to God's call, we pray. Lord, For our country, as we seek guidance from beyond ourselves, guidance in resolving so many struggles at so many levels, guidance as we choose our leaders, we pray. For those persons participating in clinical trials seeking a vaccine against COVID-19, we pray. For ourselves, ourselves who are the hands of Christ, as it says on our tent across the way, we pray. For those people who may know God only through the love and ministry of our community, we pray. For those who are in ill health, especially Alexandra Bozell, Michael Gallery, Phil Steinecker, Ed Vair, Sheila Walsh, and Bill Wingard, we pray. For all who have died, especially Eugene Marsiglia, Isaac Scarbach, Michael Walsh, and Dr. Joseph Costa, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the personal intentions which we all hold within our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in you we find the courage and the strength for our journey of faith. Hear our prayers that we might be a comforting presence to those who are suffering in our families and communities. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
My sisters and brothers, our table is prepared. Let us pray that these, our gifts, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them, you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Highest, blessed Blessed is is he who comes in the name name of the Lord. Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and And drink drink this this cup, cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray together for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall, shall be healed.
Let us pray together. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God. And I invite you all to come this Saturday for the 10 o'clock Mass for the Feast of Mary's Assumption, even though it's not a holy day of obligation, but it's a great opportunity for all of us to come together to pray to our Mother Mary, you know, because of this virus. Okay? All right. Thank you. <laughs> we will end with the song, We Walk by Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none has spoke, but we believe him here. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. We walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none has spoke, and we believe him.